Good afternoon and welcome from Western Supermare in the southwest of England. <laughs> this afternoon we are going to be making a jewellery box, one of these. It's a very multi-purpose type thing. So we take the lid off, We've got holes around the lid to hang the jewellery off, We've got a little ridge around the side to hold little bits and pieces and of course the thing in the middle. This is, although it's going to be a jewellery box, it doesn't have to be. This could be any sort of basic box that we're going to build. Start off then. Before I got going, the first thing I did was to make myself a template. I cut myself a square of card. This piece of card is about 11 centimetres square. It doesn't really matter what size it is, but it is going to form the basis for our construction. So that's going to be the bottom part and the top part. So if you want to make a bigger box, you've got to make a bigger piece of cardboard. Then I've cut another piece of cardboard into a square, which gives me about... A centimetre, half an inch, three quarters of an inch, all the way round the outer square like that. We're not going to actually cut this, but this is going to be a guide for marking where the edge, let's back in, where the edge of our flap is here. Then, having done that, I then cut myself some side pieces or as a template. So this piece here is the same length as that bottom square piece. It's going to go four of those all the way around where I cut them. And then the height, I've gone for about five centimetres. Again, about what, an inch and a half, something like that. Um, it's actually going to go on the top there. Uh, if you want it taller, then, of course, you make it taller. If you want it smaller, you make it smaller. It's entirely up to you. Uh, I'm working on there being enough by doing that so that most jewellery, when I hang it on the side there, hanging earrings and things, won't actually touch the board. But if you've got uh, lots of very big earrings and you need more hanging space, then obviously you're going to need to make it taller. So having got those pieces, I then got my clay and I've rolled it out. And as usual, I've rolled it out to the thickness of my normal sticks, which is six millimetres. I suppose that's about three eighths of an inch in width. Got those two sticks. I've rolled my clay until I can hear that I'm rolling on the wood. And whilst doing this, every now and then I lift the clay, I turn it over. Try not to be too rough on it because it will start to distort during firing otherwise and get it rolled out. Now, if you see on this clay, I don't know whether it'll pick it up on the video, you might see that actually there's some different colours clays in it. This is actually the same type of clay. It's a stoneware clay from a company here in the UK, but it's two different batches. So one of them's got a little bit more red clay in it. Won't affect the firing. By the time it's fired, they'll all be the same colour. So I'm just going to make sure that's not stuck by lifting it up. Then I'm going to cut out my pieces. So I want to cut out two of the big squares, like that, one, two, and four of the side pieces. So I cut those out. I'm going to put this to one side because I've already cut them out. And here they are. So you cut them out like that. Then you get the smaller square. You put it in the middle trying to make sure it's as even as possible all the way around and then using your knife just mark so I haven't cut through I've just scored all the way around to mark where the square is on both sides that's the first stage then what I've then done is I've actually taken the hairdryer to these I've dried them off a bit because I want them to be firm enough that they'll stand up uh, and not flop around so I then cut out four side pieces one two three now, on the one I made, my example piece, I actually then used a roller to roll a pattern on the pieces before I put them on. I'm not going to do that on this one. Uh, on this one, when it's finished, I'm just going to do patterns and things with glazes. But equally well, if you want to put stamps in or put a pattern on it or roll it in, then you do that and then you cut it again because it will change and distort the shape. So do the pattern, get your guide, cut round it again. So I've got these four. What I'm then going to do is I've buried my knife underneath my clay. So let's get my tools out. So as usual, my tools are very basic for this build. We've got a knife, which happens to be a potter's knife, but it can be any knife. I've got two different size lollipop sticks and a couple of straws. And admittedly, yes, these are not environmental friendly ones. These are plastic ones which somebody's given us and we're using them up. But they do make a nice size hole for the jewellery. Then I get my side pieces and what I'm going to do is these are going to go inside that line. So 
So get this. I'm going to put one of these now onto a bat. Like that. Put the other one out the way for the moment. And I'm going to bring a banding wheel in. So, oops, sorry about that. I've caught a camera with my foot. Get that onto the camera like that. So I get one of my sides, score the bottom, that's a nice wet slippy clay, yeah, paint that on. So that again, it's just, it's just clay with water mixed into it. And I put one of those, doesn't really matter where. But it's got to be just inside that line. So if I tip that there, you'll see I'm just going to position it just inside there. Like that. Then I'm going to get a little bit of clay. Make sure it's straight. At the moment it's bending in slightly. A little bit of clay. Roll it into worm. Paint some slip down that join. Like that. Put the worm in there. Then, using one of my lollipop sticks, I'm going to smooth the clay down onto the bottom, like that, and smooth the clay up onto the side, like that. Okay. So it looks a bit rough at the moment, but by the time we finish smoothing it down, it'll be just fine. So I'm just going to run my thumb along that and use the other lollipop stick to just even out that joint, like that. Nice and smooth. Right there. Okay. That's one side. And I go to the other side. Same again. So I score it along where it's going to stick. Get some slip. Put it on. And this is going to go opposite side to that one. But again, inside that, that line there. So position that very carefully just inside that line. Like that. Just like that. Then, as before, get another little bit of clay. <clears throat> Position it in there. I'm going to paint a little bit of slip up that join. Okay, put that in there. Again, find a really pop stick. Smooth the clay down onto the base. Okay, and up onto the side. Use the other one to just tidy it up, take away the surplus, smooth it out with my fingers, I'm trying to make it as tidy as possible at this point. Now these two other pieces, they're also going to fit inside the line, but they're going to have to have a little bit taken off them because they're a little bit too long because they've literally got to fit inside. So we need to take off a little bit doing this by eye if you want you can measure so that it will fit so that still needs a tiny bit more off the bottom you can see I haven't actually cut it straight so let's try again hopefully that will then fit in there <coughs> Kaya hello my dogs are jumpy this afternoon we have two dogs in with us today uh, so having got that to fit there I'm then going to use this then as a template to cut the other one. Then, then we go along the bottom again, score it. Like that. Kaya, shut up. Come on, behave yourself. Not like that. And then that's going to fit into there. Like that. I should have also, so not everybody's perfect, so I've forgotten that I also got to score down the side there and down the side there. Put some slip on it as well. That one and that one. So these will now fit together like that. Okay. Right, now let's do that on the other end. So this time try to remember where I have to scrape. So I need to scrape all the way up there. All up there. 
all the way across the bottom. Okay, put some slip on. What is the matter, Kai? Okay, that there. Okay, and then that goes into there, like that. Okay, all fits together. I've got to scrape the wrong place, haven't I? Hey dear. I need got that bit. Okay, right, so that goes together. Like that. Okay. And then having got those in, <coughs> we now need to put a coil of clay up the inside of them. <coughs> So measure that there. <coughs> I got all that other clay in there. So those of you who are used to hand building and done a lot of it will know that this is basic slab building here. Again, get my lollipop stick <coughs> inside it, just move it up onto the walls. That way along. I'm just going to brace it up with my hands so I don't move it around too much down onto the bottom okay. and then do the same on the other side it's moved in nice and tight okay, and then just tidy it all up either with a lollipop stick or your fingers whichever suits you and at this point try and get this as smooth as you can this is going to be where your jewelry is going to go you don't want it too rough unless you intend to line it with something i have to say lining with felt is really rather nice as well but i'm trying to get it smooth so now next thing i've got to do now is these cracks here have all got to be filled in so we get a piece of clay join it up the crack there all four sides One, two, three, four. Again, get my lollipop stick. Again, smooth it down onto the two walls, making sure that you support it so you don't push it out of shape too much. Like that. All the way around. Do that again. And the same there. Okay. Right, I'll just tidy up a bit with my fingers. So that's constructed the basic box. And what I'm going to do is again, using my lollipop stick, I'm just going to press my corners in and smooth them. As tidy as I can. That's one. Press that in, smooth it down. That. Four sides. That. Okay. There we go. That's the basic part of the, the build done. Just going to smooth around the bottom. Because you've joined it on the inside, you don't necessarily have to put a coil around the outside. That's entirely up to you. The inside one will hold it. Just tidy it up. Right, so that's the base part. Let's move that up. At this point, you can spend ages just fiddling and tidying, so I'm going to try to resist the temptation to do that and put that to one side while we work on the lid. So here's the lid here. And what we're going to want to do is we want this lid to fit and not slide off. So we're actually going to put what's called a flange onto the piece of pottery. And this is going to fit inside here to stop the lid from coming off, which is why we drew the square, because we know that that is the size of the piece we've just put on. So I get my clay here. And, uh, and then I'm gonna, I've got a strip of clay here left over from when I trimmed. And I'm going to get a guide stick and I'm going to cut some strips. So all I'm going to do is just, I'm using the side of that because I don't want it too big. Whoop. Cut down one strip, cut 
another strip out of this. Line it up. Do that. Okay, that's two. That's probably not going to be quite enough. So I'm going to do another one. That's a piece of clay here. So I'm going to cut another one. We want it so that obviously it's going to fit inside. So we need to allow the thickness of that in order to make it fit. So what we do is we use the guide stick again because we know that that has been rolled to that thickness. So therefore, that should fit on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my strip. And I'm going to rough it up. Put some slip on it. Then get my guide stick and I line it up with that top piece there. So where the line is that I've cut, I put that alongside it like that. Then I get my strip and that then goes in up against that piece of wood. If you didn't use a guide stick, don't worry, you can still get away with maybe using a ruler or something like that to get it in place. You tuck it in nice and tight, and this will get it nice and straight and tidy. Make sure it's pressed down all the way along. And then we've got a, a gap there. Now, hopefully, that gap should be the same as the top of our pot, so that should then fit in. Now, I'm going to trim this off, level with the line there and there. And do the same on the other end. So let's turn that round. Get a piece of clay, scrape it, and slip it. Okay. Like that. And then again, line up my guide stick with the edge there. Hold it in place. Put that piece of clay in up against that wooden bit that. Make sure it's firmed in. Along. Okay, and that tight against the stick. Like that. Again. You see it's a little way in from there. Trim that off. Okay. I'm actually going to need to trim this off a little bit further because I need it now to trim it off to the width of the guide stick. So I now use that to measure. And trim off there and there. We take those bits of clay away as well. Do the same on the other side. Now, if you're being lazy, you could stop here. That would do it. But we're going to have a we're going all the way around. Take those out of the way. Okay, get another strip. This time, I'm going to trim this one to size before I fit it because it's got a fit in that space. So I line it up like so. Scrape it. Slip it. Get the guide stick in place again. <coughs> right there. Okay. Make sure it's lined up with the mark I made with the knife earlier. Put my clay in place like that. Tuck it in against the wood. Like so. Make sure it's on. Okay. Right. Just move that in a little bit just to tidy it up. Okay. Then the same at the other end, another strip. Again, cut it to size. Let's just tidy that end up. That's going to fit in there, like that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let me scrape over there. Slip on it, put that in place there, again line it up with the edge there, put that in, <clears throat> press it down, smooth it all in. Okay. Now 
as I mentioned, I did dry these off a little bit beforehand to make sure they were firm enough. What should happen now is we should, if we've got this right, be able to get our base, get our top, and it should fit like that. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, so we now have a base, we have a top. I'm also going to put a little ridge around the edge. So I've cut some clay earlier, so this is going to be nice and easy. All I'm going to do is simply score around there, paint it with slip, put my ridge on there. So I cut some strips, I made them, you can make these as high or as low as you want. These ones I've made probably just, just a little bit higher, so that I will have a little dish on the side that will hold stuff on it. But obviously you can see there, we've got a little bit of a, a gap where it's uh, not fixed. So again, we're going to have to make a, something to join it. It's a little worm. It doesn't need to be very thick, but it does need to exist. So make a nice little worm. Put that in the gap there. Use my lollipop stick to just smooth it in. Looks wrong stick. Where's the other stick? Oh, that's better. Okay, smooth it in all the way along. Break it. This is going to make like a little catch dish for things like earring backs or small earrings or anything you can't be bothered to put away properly, basically. And just a little dish to drop things in alongside everything else. Get that one. Go along that. That one. That's tightened up. side and repeat all the way around. So scrape. Scrape all the way around. Okay, paint some slip on it. Put it in place. Right, change the size. So you can see it get a better look. So yeah, so I'm just uh, putting this worm in, smoothing it down, making a good join. And then once I'm happy that it's joined, I'm just using this particular stick to go along and smooth it out. A bit tidier, yeah, like that. One. Of course, if all you want to do is make a basic box, you don't have to go through all this fuss and bother. You can make the base size the same as the, the actual box size. I'm only doing this just to give myself a little bit of extra space to put some jewellery. All these makes I tend to do just for fun, so I don't tend to uh, keep the pieces myself. We do have groups where we have people come along with special needs, such as autism and things, and if they come along and they don't feel like they want to actually make, they just want to paint, then they get to have a go at painting some of these pieces and keeping them for themselves. So, uh, there, up. so one more. I just need to cut another strip, because I used the other one earlier, so... size we've got a bit of cat hair there studio cat gets everywhere there. okay and a bit of slip along there okay. hello Kaya what's the matter darling a little bit busy at the moment pet what's the matter right, I've got a Australian Kelpie Border Collie trying to get on my lap at the moment. <laughs> uh, yep, in there. Again. 
again, last bit now, just smooth that in there. Lollipop stick, tidy it up. Oops, make sure that's not going to come off. Like that. The last stage of this now is just the tidying up. I'll come back to that in a bit. So again, I've got our lid fits. I've got a bit based around the side. So now we need to put some holes in this so that we can hang jewelry off. So you put it upside down. Now, the thing to do is always to remember to make the holes bigger than you think you need. There's nothing worse than when you come to use it, find it that the holes have got filled in by uh, glaze or due to shrinkage, they're not big enough. So although you might think, oh, my jewellery's really narrow, make a bigger hole. It gives you much more flexibility. So I found that these plastic straws are great. Paper straws, probably a little bit too big, but um, better than nothing. Make sure when you put the holes in, you put them close enough to the edge so you can loop the jewellery in but not so close to the edge that you'll actually uh, break the clay. So work our way along. Now with these plastic straws, the clay will move up them to a certain point. So I usually manage to get about four holes before I find that the clay's sticking. Oh, I get another one. And um, I'm not able to make another one, but you can see the clay slowly going up the pipe as it were. But each time you make a hole, <clears throat> check to make sure it's gone right through. So that one hasn't gone right through. Now, I could get my knife and clean that out. That's one way of doing it. Which sometimes I do, just to make the straw go a bit further. Cut that one out. That's better. Okay, so make sure, as I say, they go through each time. Try to go in a straight line. I'm not very good at it. But if you need to use a ruler or guide to show where you need to be making your holes, I'm going to turn to the other end now. There. There. Okay, and then there, and so on. So we do that all the way around. I'm not going to bore you to death by doing that. <coughs> so that you've got your somewhere to hang your earrings. Let's put that on there. Now at this point, making sure it fits, you can tidy it up. So you spend a bit of time just smoothing things down. And if you want to, you can put a handle on the top, or you can just rely upon lifting it off like that when it's finished. Uh, in this case, I'm going to put a little handle on the top of this one. So I'm just going to uh, quite simply get a strip of clay here. Trim it off a little bit. <clears throat> I'm just going to go a very simple little curved handle. So just curve it around my thumb like that, and then fold the ends out. That. Now, of course, you can get a bit fancier. I pause then decide to decide whether to put a little bird on the top, but I think we won't go that complicated. So, so it's going to go on the top like that. So scrape and slip where it's going to attach. Plenty of slip. Remember, this has got to hold the weight as you lift it. So it goes on there. Now, I've got to be careful about pressing it down because I don't want to damage the, the piece underneath. It's going to make it fit. So I put it on there very gently and then add a little bit of clay. Whoops, need to drop that on the floor. A little bit of clay at either end of it. Right, and I'm using my lollipop stick again. This time putting my hand underneath to brace it so I don't squash my flange, as it were. Just move it up there and down there. Make sure it's well and truly on. And smooth it, clean it, tidy it as necessary. Yeah, that there. Turn it around, do the same on the other side. Yeah, like that. Yeah, smooth it. If you find that as you're doing it, you're just making it rougher, it's because your hands are dirty. So it's okay to give them a little rinse if you need to. The only water I've got here at the moment is my drinking water, and I think I'd be in trouble if I start washing my hands in it, so i do that. Okay, so we've now got a little handle. Now, the trick is as well, when you're making these things, don't be tempted to start lifting it by the handle. It's um, it's not going to be strong enough to hold it yet. So 
I just assume at the moment that handle is just for show. Only when it's been fired, so I didn't even try to pick it up by the handle when it's been bisque fired either. I like to break it. Okay. Goes in there. And there we go. So next job now is to just finish it off. So I'm not going to bore you to death watching me do that. But what's to be done now is to get my get my cutter and make a whole series of holes all the way around, like this one, so that I can hang my jewelry on it. And just spend a little bit of time now just smoothing and tidying and making it nice and neat. And that's it. Job done. Look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye.